What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in terms of my trades. Did I buy any stocks? Did I sell any stocks? Hint, hint, I bought some stocks, guys. Well, one stock today, and you'll see what I bought here in a couple of minutes as I break it down here in this video. I also want to share with you guys a couple of other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now and looking to trade here in the month of September in 2019. Apple stock, ticker symbol AAPL, being one of those stocks because I'm sure a lot of you guys know by now that this stock has been doing quite well over these past two days because we actually got news on what the new iPhone looks like. It's available for pre-order right now, the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I kind of want to jump in the Safari tab very quickly with you guys take a look at these phones and kind of give you guys my opinion on apple stock here going forward so if you guys find value in this video if you enjoy the content find it helpful feel free to go down below and hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market trading investing personal finance this is the channel for you so without further ado guys with about two minutes left in the markets let's get into it the S&P 500 here with again two minutes left is up $17.50 up 0.6% very strong day here for the S&P 500 today guys the Dow Jones Industrial Average very strong day even better than the S&P up 190 points up 0.7% the NASDAQ is up 63 points here up 0.82% doing the best out of the three major indexes that we track and that I talk about on this channel and you guys can see the Nasdaq is doing the best because tech in general and Apple in general is doing quite well right now right Apple's up 3% today it was up very uh, I think it was up very very good amount yesterday too um, I think it was up like 2-3% yesterday as well you know Amazon's up a dollar that's really nothing for Amazon Facebook's up almost 2 bucks Google's up 11 bucks um, you know these are definitely dry the Nasdaq as of right now. So going over here to the S&P 500 guys, let's just break down some technicals because I did talk about scenarios yesterday and yesterday's video that could potentially play out today. And one of those scenarios was that we were going to continue this uptrend and potentially test 2990, which was the resistance that we were trading um, under in yesterday's video, in yesterday's session. But today, you guys can see that we clearly gapped up above 2990, and now we're making a push to the $3,000 level yet again for the S&P 500. And let me zoom in here to, let's say, the 90-day, 2-hour chart so you can see exactly where were we trading over these past couple of days and what did I talk about in yesterday's video, just a quick recap. So the, ch the, the trading range we're in right now that we're in is between between 29.50 and 29.90, or, or at this point, the trading range that we were in, right? And in yesterday's video, there goes the markets. I mentioned that we were either going to gap up, potentially break out of this, which would be very bullish, which we did end up doing, or we were going to sell off and maybe test 29.60 again, or maybe even test the support here, which is a very critical support at around 29.50. And you guys can clearly see that we didn't end up doing that right so the fact that we gapped up today we closed above 2990 and we can just, we can see that we just closed above $3000 that's very bullish for the S&P 500 guys that's extremely bullish so the fact that we closed above $3000 right now let me show you guys that this is going to be the new level of support that we're going to need to hold now let me show you guys a bit closer on what I'm talking about here so 2990 this was the resistance right a resistance from July in the beginning of July in 2019, we broke above it, right, making it a new support. Once we broke below it, it became a resistance, and then we popped up to all-time highs again, making it a support. And then once we broke below it again, we sold off in the month of August, right, it became a resistance again. And now since we broke out of it, this is a level that we're going to need to hold as a support, roughly $29.90 to about $3,000. And if we do end up holding this level as a support, 
maybe consolidating for a couple of days, this could be really the the launching pad up to the all-time highs on the S&P which are at $3,027.98 right those are the all-time highs here on the S&P but one thing to notice um is that the RSI is a bit overbought really overbought at this point it's at about 72 and we all know at this point the closer and closer it gets to 70 the more and more overbought it gets and especially if it breaks above 70 that's very overbought so we might expect experience a bit of a pullback but this is perfect guys because if we do get the pullback that'll bring the RSI to a healthy spot and that'll give us the opportunity to retest 29.90 as a new support and from there are we going to pop and if we pop from there break 3,000 again this is going to be in my opinion again like I mentioned a couple of seconds ago the launching pad to the all-time high at 3,027 in my personal opinion but let's say we fail to hold 3,000 we fail to hold 29.90 we start to break down a bit RSI comes down let's say in the middle here whatever it may be we may be selling off a bit to either retest you know 29.75 maybe 29.60 maybe even 29.50 guys which I know it's a bit um it's kind of a waste to go from where we are now it's about a 1.5 percent drop from where we are right now but again anything can happen and I'm watching the action here in the price pre-market and of course the futures right the ES mini S&P futures in the mornings to see you know what direction could we potentially be headed for that day are we gapping up are we gapping down is it a big gap up of half a percent or more is it a big gap down of half a percent or more this is going to give me insights on where we could potentially be headed so as of now with the data we have with the price action we have um, very bullish on the S&P right again we broke 3,000 that's a very good sign but Watch out for the pullback. We might be getting it here in the next couple of uh, days, maybe even tomorrow, right? So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you guys can see, it's very similar to the S&P, right? We're overbought on the RSI. Despite all this jazz here with all these trend lines, you guys can see that we broke above 26,600. Very, very strong resistance, right? We actually pulled down and retested it as a support, and we popped, right? And we actually ended up breaking above the next resistance, which was at around $26,900, which is what we were talking about in yesterday's video. So that's a very good sign that we actually broke that today. So at this point, you know, what I want to see in the Dow is a pull down and a retest at $26,900, maybe even $27,000 flat to see if it's going to hold that level as a new support. And just like the S&P, you know, if the S&P pulls down, the RSI is going to come to a healthier spot. Same exact thing with the Dow, right? If the Dow pulls down, the RSI is going to come down. If we level out here, this could be a launching pad up to the all-time highs at about $27,398. And as of right now, guys, we're literally right there in terms of all-time highs we're about 260 ish points away from all-time highs so let's say tomorrow we miraculously have a fantastic green day that's going to pump the Dow straight to all-time highs and maybe even the S&P 500 as well so those are just the brief technicals here for the Dow that I'm looking at nothing crazy you know if we're zooming in a bit to the 20 day one hour I know it's a lot of jazz here don't focus on this just focus on this green line here which is the 50 SMA notice how we pulled down yesterday we bounced on the 26 600 level that I talked about or rather the 26 700 that general area we held it as a support and then we broke out of 26 900 like I mentioned right we may be pulling down now to also retest that 50 SMA here on the hourly chart and if we hold that that could be again a launching pad to these all-time highs but if we break the 50 SMA that's going to be a pretty bearish sign in my opinion and we may be selling off even further from there so overall right now these technicals they're not really that hard to understand we're uptrending we're seeing higher highs higher lows moving averages are acting as supports on pretty much all of these time frames that I'm seeing 
But one thing is, again, the RSI is overbought, so just keep an eye on that. We might be seeing a little bit of a, of a retracement here um, in these next couple of days. So you guys can see the NASDAQ actually swung up to nearly a 1% close here, which is very, very good. At the beginning of this video, it was up 0.8%. So the markets in general, if we're just looking at the daily very quickly, we can see very nice upswing here at the close. And let's see if it's for the Dow as well. Of course it is. And the S&P 500, same thing as well. So very bullish close. It kind of reminds me of yesterday's close that we kind of pulled down before the close and then power hour, we ran up. Very similar situation today. Power hour, we, we ran up on pretty much all of these indexes, right? And the NASDAQ, let's go to the 184 hour very quickly so we can break this down. The NASDAQ's right now at a resistance. This resistance, we failed to break out of it in the beginning of this month between the 5th and I'd say maybe the 9th of this month in September in 2019. We pulled down. And what I was mentioning in yesterday's video is that despite us getting rejected by this resistance, we pulled down and we successfully held a higher low on top of this 50 SMA on this four hour chart, as well as on top of this old resistance as a new support at around 7760. This is literally what we talked about in yesterday's video, guys, and it ended up playing out perfectly. We popped above this old resistance as a new support as well as that 50 SMA and it seems like now we are retesting that level of resistance that we failed to get above in the beginning of this month, as well as a couple of months ago, back in the month of April, end of April, into the month of May in 2019, when we failed to break out of that level. So in my opinion, guys, let me just let me just quickly uh, bring this out for you guys so you can see here. In my opinion, if we break out of this level, we hold it as a new support, I think it's very possible that we continue this bull run up to 8,000 points here on the NASDAQ futures and potentially even retest this all-time high at 8,051. And in my opinion, if Apple runs up to 230, maybe 235, I saw a bunch of analysts actually, I think it was Morgan Stanley, one of them, they raised their price target on Apple to 245, 250, I think one was at 260 even. You know, if, if, if this drags up Apple's um, stock price, if the iPhone released as well if we get you know the first earnings report which probably won't be the next one it might be the one after that 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 does include iPhone sales you know if that does very well the Nasdaq can definitely pump up into the 8,000 level, maybe even above that here in terms of what we're looking at right here. So those are just a couple of things to keep an eye on, to, to, to just keep in your mind, honestly, from a technical perspective um, in terms of the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. So let me know down below in the comments section, what do you guys think about the markets right now? I'd love to know. What do you think about Apple stock? Let me know down below in the comments section. I'm really interested in seeing and hearing what you guys have to think about that. So let's just get into the trading portion of today's video, guys. Um, AT&T is what I ended up taking a position in today. And this is one that I ended up calling out in yesterday's video as well due to the positive catalyst that it did end up having that it did end up having, right? And let me t tell you guys what this catalyst was if you guys ended up missing yesterday's video or if you didn't really uh, pay attention to AT&T stock in general. And I totally understand because AT&T, it's really not the most talked about stock out there. It's not a hot stock out there. So news around AT&T, you might miss it unless you are, unless you're invested in it, which I personally am. I kind of catch everything. Everything's on my radar in terms of the stocks that I'm invested in, right? But anyway, we got news that a hedge fund ended up putting a $3.8 billion stake, I believe that's the number, in AT&T, and they think the stock is extremely undervalued with a price target of $60 per share. And whenever a big-name hedge fund comes out, guys, publicly, they put money into a stock. This, not all the time, but sometimes it pumps optimism into that stock and it shoots the stock's price up and it causes short term, maybe even long term, but definitely in the short term, it causes a bullish, uh, what's the word here, bullish sentiment in the stock, right? And we can see AT&T went from 36 per share 
up to $40 per share pre-market when we got that news. Then all of a sudden, it sold off all the way down to about $36.60 right? We ended up holding that 50 SMA support here at around 36.60. We didn't break that support, which would have been bad. We held it, which it's been a support over these past couple of weeks. So that's a very good sign. Then we ended up popping up after market and pre-market in the next day, which was the 10th of September, which was yesterday. And then we ended up gapping up this morning as well, right? Which is which ended up being the reason why I got into this stock. And no joke, I drew these trend lines in yesterday's video or before I filmed yesterday's video and it literally played out exactly not exactly to these trend lines but kind of the way I was thinking it was going to play out right we got the pull down we held we got another kind of mini pull down here before we ended up popping up and the overall trajectory ended up pointing up right and you can see what I'm saying here on a closer basis, we gapped down, we ended up gapping up this morning, and then we saw a pull down heading into the market open, which is actually where I was watching AT&T for this swing trade entry, right? I wanted to see if the price was going to end up breaking moving averages, which would have been bearish, which would have been a sign for me not to get in, or was it going to hold the moving averages, was it going to hold either the 180 or the 50, and it ended up holding both, and was it going to pop up, which it ended up doing, so once it did break up here, guys, you know, from $38, we were holding this level for about 30 minutes or something, 30 minutes to an hour, right, Pretty strong support at around 38. And then once we gapped up, once we started to see the EMA crossing above the 50 SMA here on the five day, five minute, and we started to see that very uh, uh, kind of like a bullish flag here, this is when I ended up getting into the position um, with a small really portion of what my total position is going to be here. And this is kind of my swing trading strategy. It's nothing magical. It's nothing that, you know, I, I, it took me years and years to develop. It's very simple, right? You scale into your positions. It's either 10%, 20%, 30% of your goal position at once, whatever it may be, right? Me personally, I'm going 20, 25% a lot of the time into my positions and I add to them as they continue to go up. So initially I put in some money here, about 20 to 25% of my position at around 38.15. And now I've built a pretty nice buffer for myself because we did end up closing the day as you guys can see um, let me just quickly clear this. Ah, that doesn't matter, actually. But we can see that we ended up closing the day at $38.75, a 3% day in the green today, right? And we ended up holding the 50 SMA heading into the close, which gives me incentive to hold this into the close, to be completely honest with you guys, and maybe even add more money tomorrow based on how these technicals are moving. But I feel totally comfortable holding AT&T here as a swing trade, and uh, that's what I'm really doing at this point, guys. Excuse me. I'm in at 38.15. Right now, I'm up 1.2% um, in my position. And first target sell at this point, if we zoom out a bit, three-year, one week, you guys can see some resistances are coming up on AT&T. We have that one at around $39 to $40, which is where we gapped up a couple of days ago, which is going to be the first level of resistance where I might shave off some profits, right? That's going to be right around here. We have another one... <coughs> coming up at the low 40 level, uh, like $40.80, $40.75, roughly there. And we have another resistance at around $42.50, which is this high roughly on this three-year, one-week chart. So there are some levels coming up here where AT&T might get rejected at. And honestly, we may not even get to those levels, right? Just because this catalyst came out that's positive, it's not 100% that the stock's going to fly up. It's just an incentive for me to get in on this positive momentum. And once I see it, if I see it start to break trend, that's where I'd take my profits 
or cut my losses, right? But as of now, I just want to ride this momentum. I want to ride this trend. And that's what I'm just honestly doing, guys. So AT&T is what I'm in right now. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, what are you doing with at Vstas? Because you got into at V yesterday. And at V did well this morning. I had high hopes for it this morning, but you guys can see we ended up closing pretty poorly today. Actually down $1.12 at the close, down about 2%. So like I said in yesterday's video, guys, at V, I want to give this one some wiggle room. So I'm sticking to that. Um, I'm in at about $55.10, in at about $55.15, something like that. So I'm down on my position right now. I'm down, let's see, on, on a, on a, a percentage basis how much I'm down. It's literally not even half a percent, I bet. Um, I actually haven't even calculated it, so you'll see my live reaction, which probably won't be too amusing, but I'm down about, let's say, um, close to half a percent, like I guessed, right? About a half a percent down right now, and I do want to give it a 2% stop loss. That's what I'm currently working with. So tomorrow is going to be a deciding factor, in my opinion, for ATV. You know, if we end up selling off even further, I might just take a brief loss before looking for a re-entry. But then again, like I said, guys, I want to give it some wiggle room. So I'm kind of in this position where um, I want to be strict with my stop losses, but again, I kind of want to maybe see how it rides out for this next week, but ideally... You know, at the, I want to end up holding this one, like I said yesterday, you know, into the high 60s, or not high 60s, that would be ideal, right? High 50s, um, like 59.60, that's the ideal point in time where I would sell at view, or rather the ideal price that I'd sell at view, right? And that's going to be us getting closer to this resistance from um, really the October month of 2018 when we gapped down all the way from 62 all the way down to about 54. So I'm looking at this as a level to sell, but again, we're fiddling with this resistance now. Ideally, I'd like to see a break before I add more money. And again, I'm, I'm going to let this one ride most likely unless something dramatic happens, drastic happens where it drops all the way down to 52 tomorrow, which would be pretty bad. Honestly, that would be bad because I'd be down like 5% at that point. At that point, I'd probably cut my losses, but um, yeah, that's just how how it's going right now guys and and kind of I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable on at v because I do have that AT&T position which I'm green on right now so it's kind of offsetting the loss I'm actually in the green if we're just looking at both positions um, because again I'm up like 1% on AT&T down about 0.5% on at v with the same amount of money in both so that's kind of what I'm doing right now guys at v AT&T um, no day trades today I was looking to hop into you guys but on the five day five minute like I mentioned in our chat today we failed to break out of the 180 SMA resistance right here I was looking for an entry point we popped up briefly but then but then we got rejected hardcore from there um, you know if we were to do something like that I would have entered there for a potential momentum breakout play we didn't get it and uh, that's just honestly opening up a further opportunity in my opinion um, for you guys here over these next couple of days right if you're looking at the 20 day one hour chart you guys can see we're holding 20 bucks, although we are breaking below the 50 SMA. Um, it's kind of in a weird spot, right? If we hold 20, break out like this tomorrow, that could be a gap fill up to 23 bucks. If we break this level, you know, we start to go down to the 19s. We may be going down to $18 per share, which, hey, that might open up an even better opportunity, um, especially as these winter months are rolling around when natural gas is typically bullish. So I'm watching you guys, guys. Just keep an eye on that. That's kind of like a mini breakdown on this stock, but I want to get into the Apple I phones very quickly because that is what's pushing up the stock right now in the services business as well. We have Apple Arcade, I believe it's called. It's coming in at $4.99 per month. We have Apple TV rolling out here soon. We have Apple News, all of these services, and uh, really just the iPhone is, is just pumping up the sales right now, not the sales, of uh, the stock of Apple, right? And just taking a look at these iPhones very quickly, like I said in the beginning of the video, we have the iPhone 11 Pro. 
Pro, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and we have the iPhone 11, right? And the interesting thing about these is the price point. Look at these price points, guys. Starting at $700, iPhone 11, that's pretty good, right? The price of the iPhone Pro Max, the 11 Pro Max, is at about 10, uh, 10 hundred here at about $1,100. That's pretty good. And the iPhone 11 Pro is at around $1,000. So in terms of the previous iPhone release, I feel like these prices are right in line. And obviously the features have gone up a bit. We see the cameras here. There's three cameras on the Pro and the Pro Max, but there's only two here on the iPhone 11. And if we're going down to see what these cameras are, because when I first saw this, I was like, wait a second, why is there three cameras here? Why is there three lenses? That's really weird. Well, you guys can see this one is a triple 12 megapixel ultra wide. We have a wide and we have a telephoto camera with night mode. So all of these are different, right? And the iPhone Pro Max has the same thing. The iPhone 11 only has two, which is the dual uh, 12 mega megapixel ultra wide and wide cameras with night mode, right? And just going down here, it says the, uh, the battery lasts four hours longer which if you guys have had iPhones you know the battery is great for the first year two years and then all of a sudden out of nowhere coincidentally the battery starts to die in half a day right I'm on I still have my iPhone 8 here um, I think it's the 8 plus whatever it may be the battery was great the first year two years I've had it but now I feel like I have to charge it every couple of hours because the battery is going like this I swear Apple has like a, a system where they just like switch it on and your battery dies like five times quicker just so you get the, the new iPhone. I'm sure it's not like that, but that's kind of what runs through my head sometimes. I'm thinking like, wow, this phone just starts dying out of nowhere so quickly. It's kind of funny. But anyway, 64 gigs, 256, 512, nothing crazy there. And uh, that's really just the main specs I wanted to go over. Splash, water, and dust resistant up to four meters, two meters for the iPhone 11. And yeah, guys, that's a lot of the... The, 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 the main specs here on the iPhone without boring you. The main thing, again, is those three phones, or the, uh, the three cameras, rather, in my personal opinion, which I think... It's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool, especially if you're using your phone uh, for, for photography, for uh, maybe shooting YouTube videos, you know, filming videos, whatever it may be. So going over to Apple stock, guys, ticker symbol AAPL, you guys can see this stock has been doing quite well. I think yesterday is when these phones got revealed, and yesterday the stock was at $213. We've seen a $10 pop since then. That's about a 4 to 5% move in the stock which is very, very, very good. And on a technical basis here, we're actually getting very bullish on Apple, guys. Very, very bullish. You guys can see, you know, if we just draw out some uh, uh, resistance levels here, with the breakout today... You know, Apple stock is at a point where we broke out of that 215 to 220 level of resistance. Now we're getting to a point where we're testing those highs that we haven't been at here in a while, right? We're getting closer to that 233 all-time high that we hit back in, what month was this? Back in October, uh, September of 2018, about a year ago. So this could be the point where we may be filling the gap up to 233 here on this positive news regarding regarding the iPhone, not really positive, but just the initial hype of the release of this iPhone 11, right? And in my opinion, guys, it's all about iPhone cycles in a sense when it comes to people buying iPhones. Sometimes certain cycles like the iPhone 8, for example, I don't know if this is correct. I don't know which one did poorly. I'm forgetting off the top of my head now, but some people buy an iPhone 8, they skip the next one, and then they buy the next cycle. So it's pretty much like buying every other cycle because not everyone wants to buy a new phone every single year for $1,000. So this could be that cycle where a lot of people start buying the iPhone again, right? Start buying a new iPhone if they didn't get the, the previous model. Let's say they're still rocking the older one like me, iPhone 8. They, they may be like, oh, wow, iPhone 11, this is time for me to upgrade my phone. Am I going to do that? No, because I have a perfectly working iPhone 8. I'd rather put that money in the stock market, but the average consumer probably would 
upgrade their phone, which that would boost up the sales heavily for the iPhones in general, more revenues, more profit for Apple, hence a higher stock price. So at this point, you know, if this is the cycle that people start buying heavily, this could end up popping up the stock, which in my opinion is important to watch this stock for that reason over these next couple of weeks, next couple of months, as we start to see how these iPhones are selling, we start to see the numbers in the reports, right? In the quarterly reports, I don't know if it's going to be this quarter, the next quarter, whichever quarter it may be that does have the new iPhone sales. Um, I'm interested in seeing that. So on a technical basis, again, now we're trading between 215 and the all time high at 233. So watch this level at 220, um, you know, 220, 215, watch for a pullback and a potential retest on this 50 SMA, this could be a beautiful entry point on Apple, right? For a swing trade, for a day trade, whatever it may be, right? This could just be a great, great entry point. And honestly, guys, we may be getting that pullback once this initial hype ends up phasing out. We may get the RSI back down to a healthy area, which would be another incentive to get in. Because right now, the RSI, it's a bit overbought. It's kind of scary. It's daunting looking at that RSI, which is why I'm not really getting into Apple quite yet. I'd rather have my money in ATVI, ATV right now, and AT&T, ticker symbol T. But if Apple does get to that right point, honestly, guys, I'm going to pull the trigger and uh, hop into it. So for this video, guys, that's pretty much it, right? The main stocks I wanted to get across to you guys today were Apple AT&T and Atvi because those are what I'm really watching heavily right now and two of those I have my money tied into it so you know I'm watching those heavily because I'm actively involved with them and you guys on the, on, on the ETF side here you guys is very very um it's very volatile obviously and it's offering a good opportunity on this pullback if we get the confirmation of the support of the bounce and for the reversal to the upside you know that would be a very good um really uh, a scenario to get into you guys if we do get all of those steps um before before uh getting into it right that that we need to see before getting into it so that's it for this video guys right if you enjoyed it feel free to go down below hit the like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me drop a comment let me know what you guys did today in the markets what are your thoughts on the apple phone um <clears throat> what are your thoughts on apple in general the markets in general i would love to know and quick um uh quick announcement here channel announcement for those of you guys that stuck till the end, I actually ended up getting the camera today. A couple of months ago, I announced how I'm revamping my, my home studio, if you want to call it here, with kind of a new setup to film videos. And I got this Canon M50, guys. I spent $600 on this camera, or more like $700 with the, uh, with the SD card and everything. And I haven't spent this much on a camera ever right so i'm really looking to revamp the quality here um on this channel i have a tripod sitting right behind my computer right now so other than these screen videos of the charts like you guys have been seeing from now and then I want to have some more videos of me sitting down at my desk, maybe with a cool background, cool LED lights, whatever it may be, to start filming some more topic videos, broad videos, stock market uh, investing for beginners, trading for beginners, tip videos, whatever it may be, you know, vlog style, whatever it may be, right? I just want to revamp the quality of a lot of those sit down videos so yeah just figured out to let you guys know uh for sticking uh to the end here expect some videos coming very soon with this beautiful beautiful camera and guys the quality is insane right just quickly again on a side tangent i was filming on this iphone the quality compared uh, to the iPhone is insane. This is so much better. It makes the iPhone look like a BlackBerry, right? A BlackBerry from 2008. It's pretty crazy. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll catch you all in the next one. I appreciate all you guys watching, especially if you stayed till the end. You guys are awesome. So I'll catch you guys. Uh, peace out.